ऊपर दिखाओ या या वेरी वेल गुड आफ्टरनून डॉक्टर हिरमे दिखाना या या डॉक्टर बंजन हिरमे आर हियरिंग यू या आई थिंक सो लेट्स सी कितना होगा विल विद मी वी हैव डॉक्टर मखरे डॉक्टर शोकन डॉक्टर Shri Choksi and Samir Dani. And I think after this, we, we are ready for you. Your story. I asked Dr. Manjunath to finish two cases. Yeah, good afternoon to all I mean, of you. Have half an hour, twenty minutes. Maybe a little first. louder. I think what we'll do. See, uh, little different from, uh, yeah, little different from the morning. Uh, we are moving from coronary to valve here. Uh, this is a uh, thirty-seven-year-old lady of uh, rheumatic uh, mitral stenosis. I can see here she is in atrial fibrillation. And uh, left atrial appendage clot type 1A, as per based on our classification, she was uh, anticoagulated for three months. So she is in function class 3, atrial fibrillation, and uh, heart rate uh, on the table is about 120. Uh, blood pressure is uh, 120, 120 by 80. And uh, we'll show the other pictures. This is uh, next atrial fibrillation. This is typical X ray of. Uh, rheumatic mitral stenosis, pulmonary hypertension. And you can see here, uh, the parasternal angle axis shows dooming of the mitral valve and bit of uh, calcium on the posterior mitral leaflet. Then in the left lower panel, you can see the short axis of the mitral valve uh, that uh, orifice is less than one. And there is a TR. And uh, there is uh, pulmonary artery hypertension is around uh, 70. Pulmonary artery systolic uh, pressure is 70. If you look at the short axis of the mitral valve, the anterolateral commissure is uh, free from calcium, while the posterior medial, there is some amount of calcium. This is very, very important because if both the commissures are calcified, then there is always a risk of uh, leaflet tear. So at least if one of the commissure is free from calcium, you can still uh, have a, a balloon mitral valvoplasty. Uh, this is a transesophageal echo for you. You can see a, a clot confined to the LA appendage uh, protruding a little bit into the body. And of course, there is spontaneous uh, echo contrast. So since the clot is confined to the appendage body and uh, anticoagulated for about three months, uh, we are going ahead with the balloon mitral valvoplasty because uh, our hardwares will not be into the appendage uh, at all, and the clot is also organized. Yeah, this is the story of this patient, uh, Dr. Ramat. Yeah, I'm surprised they kept half hour for you, Dr. Manjunath. I mean, I'm sure you'll finish in a few minutes. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. So only thing, uh, we have to use a 3-2 wire for uh, threading the mullein sheath because the mullein sheath doesn't go over 3-5 because most of our labs do have only 3-5. So if you, unless you have a 3-2 wire, mullein sheath doesn't slide. So you can always uh, see that this sparks, I mean, you can maneuver so that it is in the left denominate vein so that when you are coming down, it gets an angle onto the atrial septum. This patient actually was on anticoagulation, stopped uh, five days back. P INR yesterday was 1.3. Was she anticoagulated for a length of time earlier or no? Yeah, yeah, she was anticoagulated for about three months. The whole objective of anticoagulation is uh, let the clot become more adherent and more these things. So I'm. Yeah, LA40. So I'm just one space below in uh, AP view, then I'm going to LA40. Low punch. So. LA40, we have to pick up a point between pigtail anteriorly, vertebral column posteriorly. So you can see I'm just injecting, uh, we are into left, we are in the left atrium now. So now I will just advance the mullein sheath, uh, keep over the broken bare needle. 
because uh, you should not advance uh, with the needle projecting beyond the mullein sheath because there is always a chance of perforation. So, can you show the pressure? We are into the left atrium actually. Now we are in LA. So, let me take a simultaneous uh, LV as well as LA pressure. Can, can we show that? Ah. So, there is a big diastolic gradient, okay? Uh, LA pressure is uh, 53 by 24, mean of 38. Yeah, we can see that very well. So with, yeah, so we'll go with the spring guide word now. I always keep uh, pigtail in descending aorta, any flushes and all, you can always do it. See now, to know whether you have gone to the softest portion of the septum, just the mullein sheath itself you can advance and see. Yes, mullein sheath is uh, going smoothly. So probably it has gone through the uh, softest portion of the AS. Many people say, I've always punctured at four Sava valleys, which I don't believe. Many a times you are across four Sava valleys, sometimes it's above four Sava valleys, sometimes it's below four Sava valleys. You are a very honest interventionist, Manjunath. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is... Uh, 30, I mean, our height is 165. So we are going to, because as per the formula, we have to take 25 balloon, but I will downsize by 2. See, many a time, rather than doing multiple uh, runs of the septal dilator, you can just dilate, keep it for 30 seconds, it stretches the septum nicely. Of because septal uh, puncture is not just for balloon mitral alloplasty, we have other procedures, LA appendage closure, left heart catheterization, mitra clip device, so many things. So what are going to be the special steps? Another important thing is you have to always keep an eye on the... Special steps to avoid the clot. Uh, you have to keep an eye always on the left. Yeah, I think uh, since it is an appendage clot, I am just doing routinely. Otherwise, my, uh, if the clot were to be in the roof of the thing, we would have done over-the-wire technique. That is where we introduce the spring guide wire instead of LA into the LV itself. See here, when once two thirds of the stretched balloon crosses this thing, you release this uh, balloon stretching tube so that it, uh, it does not uh, get into that zone. Always, I never flush into the left atrium. Uh, always we keep aspirating because... Uh, uh, what about the heparin? Have you already given the heparin? So, we have to come and look for this. Yes. Dr. Manjunath? Heparin, 3,000 units we have given. Yeah, 3,000 units given. Before septal puncture only I had given, because sometimes you can give after septal puncture, sometimes. So you can always watch for this uh, bobbing movement, 
that means you are on top of the mitral valve So one thing, you always make sure that the balloon reaches the apex, uh, otherwise it, it can get stuck in the subvalar apparatus. 50 percent? Yeah. Oh, sir. Okay, okay. One second. Yeah. 50? Yeah. Come on, come on. Very okay. Full breakfast. So we'll just uh, check with the gradient as well as the mitral valve area. So because you're slightly yes. undersized, you could go full on the inflation, right? Yeah. Elena? Yeah. Elena. Huh? <coughs> okay. Uh, we'll superimpose. I think always uh, you should inflate uh, Dr. Remet at a high pressure zone. So, see here our uh, required balloon diameter was 24. So I, I inflated at, I, I have taken a 26 balloon. So if you inflate at 24 in a 26 balloon, you generate a great pressure. Suppose if you take 28 balloon and inflate at 24, then you will not generate that great pressure. So we have to inflate balloon at a high pressure zone. So if, if, you are in, if your required diameter is 24, you take 26 balloon or if your required diameter uh, is 22, you take 24 balloon. So is there something like uh, soft dilatation, like if there is an Otherwise, associated mitral regurg, people underdo the dilatation, is that, uh, is that acceptable or no? No, if there is a calcium or if there is a MR, you can downsize the balloon by two millimeters. So it's fine. I think uh, with a heart rate of 144, a gradient of around uh, almost uh, diastole, it is touching. Uh, just to, you can show the pressure. Yeah. You'll have an echo? Yeah. You can show the no, no, it's coming, coming. Okay, who is coming? Yeah, it's a wide jet actually. In fact, our LA pressure as uh, mean has dropped from uh, for 35 to 17. So you can see here a wide jet. Because of atrial fibrillation, fast heart rate, so you can go on the short axis and show. Yeah, I think you can zoom that. Yeah, freeze, 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 freeze. Pressure, but echo, echo, echo. Echo, echo. Show the echo, please. Yeah. Running. Yeah, you can show, you can see here uh, both anterolateral as well as posterior medial commissure is well split. Yeah, we can see that. And there is no echo. MR. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I we can see it well on the echo. Contact. It's fine. It is. Mm. Huh. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we can see it very well. well how much is the oh, area now? He's asking why they are giving Manjana 30 minutes for you. Five minutes is enough. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so we, we, gradient we, test. Uh, so, Dr. Manjunath, you are five minutes ahead of time. Uh, Nishit, any comments from you? Interesting that you are here. Don't do much of Hello. Yeah. What is so happening with the audio? I mean, audio visual. Mitral valve replacement. In birthday, Lola. And they worked out very well. We use the Sapien uh, aortic valve Hello. in mitral position. Yeah, yeah, Manjunath, we can hear you. Sound birthday. Hello. 
Shark back access. in the US, you don't get too much of these mitral valves, but uh, every now and then there is um, prosthetic mitral valve stenosis. So where do you think the septal puncture technique would be useful for you in US? Pardon? Septal puncture techniques, where it could be useful for you in United States? Hello? For this mitral valve, for uh, atrial appendage occluders, they're very important. All right, uh, Mr. Padmanab, can we switch to Dr. Khanna's? Yeah. Mitral clips are very important. Hello. Very very important to do. Yeah, yeah. So you can see here. Inferior. Uh, actually, you can see here the short axis of the mitral valve. <coughs> Both the commissures are split. See. When you matter of kills, they didn't. You just keep talking and sit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So both the commissures are split, it's and uh, I think uh, end diastolic. Yeah, yeah. I think I don't want to dilate anything <coughs> further here because we have achieved a, a good area is around. Uh, 1.8 and LA pressure has dropped and the endiastolic gradient is hardly 2 to 3. See, when we are removing the balloon from the left atrium to right atrium, normally you have to put back the spring guide wire and this thing. If it comes smoothly, it is fine. Here it is coming smoothly, that's okay. And uh, let me check the RV pressure rather than going for an exchange with the uh, uh, NIH catheter, I mean uh, endole catheter, let me check the RV pressure with the mitral balloon itself. So, because otherwise it takes lot of other exchange and all. Dr. Iramet, uh, yeah, we hello? are watching that. Yes, That's you are RV. with us. Yeah, this is yeah. RV, right? See RV pressure. See RV pressure uh, before the procedure was 75 systolic, and now it's around 59, 55, 59. Uh, can you show the hematoma? Yeah. So this is one. I think with the same mitral balloon, you can check the RV pressure, uh, which indirectly always gives pulmonary artery systolic pressure. Otherwise, you have to exchange for uh, this uh, again spring guide wire, then you have to introduce, uh, uh, I mean, endole or those catheters. So this will shorten the fluoroscopic time. So definitely, uh, PA pressure has dropped from 75 to 50, 50 now. Can you yeah. See, when we are uh, stretching the balloon, one point here, you have to keep the spring guide wire loop well in the, at least two loops should be there in the uh, left, right atrium, uh, beyond this balloon tip. Yeah, go the, uh, have the loop, yeah, still. See, otherwise what happens, if only tip of the wire is projecting, then you try to stretch the balloon, that wire can get cut. So, best is have two loops beyond the balloon, then you can lock and stretch the balloon and remove it. So I think uh, this is for you. Any questions from the panel or audience? No, Hello? Dr. So. Manjuna, that was an excellent case demonstration. Actually, BMV is by Hello? and large nowadays are uh, sort of not done by many people. So uh, I think this was an excellent case picture. Step by step, particularly with the electrode. Anyway, proceed. Okay, uh, Dr. Manjuna, that was great. Thank you indeed. Uh,